the gold at stake here. In the women's bantamweight division, 54 kilograms, the Philippines' Ira Villegas. Risa She's making it rain right now. Ira Villegas of Risa. What's your Josie Gabuco, gold medalist. Good morning, everyone. This is Angel, your host for today's exciting episode about ordinary moms who have done extraordinary works to bring up champions in sports. On behalf of the young women and big girls out there, allow me to greet and thank all the wonderful mothers and grandmoms out there. We millennials sometimes don't talk about this, but deep inside us, we know very well the noble works you've been doing for us, your children. For others, it is a month-long celebration. For the young women and big girls like me out there, let us now become more conscious of what's happening in the world. On this occasion, the United Nations calls every nation to reflect on progress made, to call for change and to celebrate acts of courage and determination by ordinary women who have played an extraordinary role for our communities and families. The United Nations notes that while the world has made unprecedented advances, no country has sadly achieved gender equality. It even cited legal restrictions that kept 2.7 billion women worldwide from accessing same choice of jobs as men. The United Nations also claims that as of 2019, less than 25% of the leaders worldwide were women. Worse, one in three women and girls still experience gender-based violence. So let's learn combat sports to protect us. Meantime, let's revisit the Philippines. The passage in 2009 of the Magna Carta of Women has contributed to the great stride of counting for women and girls across sectors. Oh yes, Section 17 of the Implementing Rules and Regulations of this law or otherwise, called Republic Act, 9710 is dedicated to establishing and strengthening programs for the participation of women and girls in competitive and non-competitive sports as means to achieve excellence, promote physical and social well-being, eliminate gender role stereotyping, and provide equal access to the full benefits of development for all persons. So guys, thanks to this Magna Carta. Going back to our episode for today, we are happy to celebrate the Philippines Women's Month by honoring ordinary women who have played an extraordinary role as a mother to our national women boxers. But before we present them to you, please relax as we listen to what is in store for us in this episode's Kwentong Export. Take it away, Commissioner Celia Kira. Ang aking ibabahaging kwento sa inyo ngayon ay tungkol sa isa sa pinakapaboritong sports nating mga Pilipino. Ito ay ang boxing. Alam niyo ba na ang boxing... Ang 
pinaguri ang King of Combat Sports? Dahil tunay naman ito ay nakakaaliw na tagisan ng lakas, determinasyon, lakas ng loob at tibay ng dibdib. Kaya kinatangkilik ito ng maraming tao. Si Onomastos Smirnaos ang kinikilalang kauna-unahang Olympic boxing winner. Ito ay nangyari noong 688 BC sa 23rd Olympiad. Alam nyo ba na noong mga panahon ng Romano, ang globes nila ay talaga namang nakakatakot. Sestos ang tipo ng globes na pinauso ng mga Romans. Sa Roman Gladiator Rug Boxing, natatapos lamang ang laban pag nabatay na ang isa sa mga boxers. Sa modernong panahon, ang boxing ay unang kinilala bilang Olympic sports noong 1908. Alam nyo ba na si Jack Broughton ay kinikilalang father of boxing? Dahil sa kanyang maraming naiambag sa pagbuon ng mga rules na sinusunod hanggang sa kasadukuyan. Alam nyo ba na si Elizabeth Wilkinson ang unang babaeng boxer sa kasaysayan ng sports? Si Nicola Adams naman ang kauna-unang babaeng nagwagi na Olympic Boxing Gold Medal. Si Len Core ang may hawak ng pinakamaraming laban sa kasaysayan ng boxing mula 1988 hanggang 1947. Siya ay lumaban sa 463 bouts. Kailangan pa ng iba yung sikap upang marami pang kababaihang Pinoy ang sasali sa sports na to. Muli, ito ang inyong Commissioner Kiram na walang sawang maghahatid ng kwentong kababaihan, kwento para sa kaalaman at karunungan sa sports. Pokari Sweat! Not at your best? You may be dehydrated. You need Pocari Sweat. It replaces the electrolytes you've lost and helps you perform at your best. Be at your best with Pocari Sweat. Pocari Sweat. Pintados, pintados, those wag and pan, kabataan, kalinaw, Honor to call in here our first champ, Ira Villegas. Ira is a 25-year-old boxer from Tacloban, Leyte. She joined the national team of the Association of Boxing Alliances in the Philippines (ABAP) in 2012, and has been competing internationally for the country since then. Her latest win is a bronze medal in the bantamweight of the 2019 Southeast Asian Games. Let's listen to her story. Maupay na aga, iyong katanaan. My name is Ira Villegas. I am 25 years old from Taklawan City. Um, yung pangalan po ng mama ko is si Nida Cordero Villegas, taga MacArthur Summer po siya. Um, ang naalala ko po nung maliit ako is si mama po kasi, grabe ka ano po, uh, magdisiplina po. And then, grabe po siya mag-alaga. And then, yung work po ni mama ko is vendor po nagbebenta po kami ng mga pinat po pag may mga piyesta-piyesta. And then ngayon po sa pinagkakaabalahan niya po ngayon is kasi po uh, pandemic so hindi po siya makapag-work. Ang ginagawa po ni mama ko is nagbabante po sa mga apo niya. Yun po yung pinagkakaabalahan niya ngayon tapos sa bahay lang po. Ang naalala ko po nung maliit ako, mapasaway po kasi ako nung bata ako and then... Uh, mahilig po ako maglaro-laro sa labas, makipaglaro sa mga lalaki, tapos lagi akong pinapagalitan ng mama ko. 
Kasi nga po, parang pag-uwi ko, ganito, ang daming kabulastugan. Tapos, nung bata po ako, habang nagtitinda po si mama, is sumasama po ako sa kanya every Saturday and Sunday sa mga, ano, pag may mga pesta-pesta po, sinasama niya po ako mag- Uh, magbenta ng manin, ng chicharon. Tapos, natry ko po yung pumunta kami ng awan late para magbenta. Tapos, uh, yung nilalakaran po namin is ano um, sand. Tapos, buong araw nag-iikot kami. Uh, magkapera lang. Tapos, sobrang sakit na lang pa ako noon kasi yung init. Tapos, nakachinelas lang ako. Tapos, ang layo-layo na nilalakad namin from uh, from island. Tapos, sa second na naman, sa pangalawang beach na naman, pupunta kami hanggang sa Uh, parang pagod na pagod na ako tapos sabi ni mama ko kaya ko pa ba tapos ayun sabi ko kaya ko pa and then ginawa ni mama ko is kahit uh, mabigat yung dala niyang ano ng peanut basket tapos ano yung chicharon binuhat ako ni mama ko tapos pumunta ka sa isa isang ano po kasi isang parang kubo tapos doon kami nag rest tapos Um, lunch time na po kasi noon, um, naghanap, uh, naghanap po si mama ng water kasi po wala po kami nabila ng water tapos doon po kami kakain tapos nung time po noon, ay eh, antagal po ni mama ko tapos umiiyak po ako noon kasi akala ko iiwan ako ni mama ko noon tapos grabe nung iyak po kasi tag- ang sobrang tagal ni mama ko tapos after po noon, nung bumalik po si mama ko um, tumayin po siya sa akin tapos sabi niya bakit ako umiyak sabi ko sa kanya ba, uh, baka po kasi ano, um, iniwan niya na ako iyak ako tapos tinag ako ni mama ko tapos um, Balik ulit kami sa pagtitinda ng, ayun, mani. Um, yung kinabubuhay namin is pagtitinda ng pinat tapos, ano, um, chicharon. Tapos si Papa ko naman is nagja-junk shop po. Nag-aral po ako ng elementary sa uh, Remedios, ng The Dumaldes Elementary School, Taklawan City. Doon po ako nag-graduate. So, habang nag-aaral po ako is um, tumutulong po ako kay Mama pag, uh, pag wala pong pasok. Sumasama po ako kay mama ko magtinda ng pinat tsaka ng chicharong. Tapos minsan naman po kay papa ko. Tapos ayun, aral, ganun lang po. And then, nung high school naman po ako, nag-aaral ako ng high school. Nung una po, nag-aaral po ako 2009, graduate ako din. 2010, nag-aaral ako sa Cirelo, Roy Montaigne National High School, Tacloban City. Um, hanggang first year high school lang po ako kasi medyo pasaway. Tapos... Um, nung elementary din po kasi tinuturuan na ako ni kuya ko ng boxing tapos hanggang nung high school is nung tinuturuan niya ako medyo nagkakat-kat class na ako ganun and then nag-training ako ng boxing, taekwondo pa ganun-ganun, si ate ko kasi po nag-taekwondo and then tapos ang training sa taekwondo punta na naman ako sa boxing tapos parang hindi ko na ano yung uh, pag-aaral ko so, kasi lagi po akong nag absent dahil po sa training kasi nga uh, sinasabay ako ni kuya ko sa training nila tapos Noong time na po na yun, hanggang sa medyo nahinto po ako, medyo pinapagalitan po ako ni mama ko bakit hindi ako nag-aaral, gusto ko mag-boxing. Noong time po kasi na yun, parang uh, nagkaroon po ako ng parang jealousy or parang inget kay kuya ko kasi pag umuwi po kami sa bahay, parang siya yung breadwinner ng family. Parang pagpasok ko sa bahay, parang wow, si kuya ko simula sa panganay, sa sumunod, sa pang, pang ano po kasi ako sa magkakapatid pang apat. So yung panganay, pangalawa, tsaka yung Pangatlo is, lagi po kasi silang may award kasi yung panganay ko namin is nagbaboxing. And then, yung kuya ko din po yung pangalawa nagbaboxing. Tapos yung ate ko po is nag-taekwondo boxing. So, ako po pang apat parang nag-jealous. Nag-jealous po ako parang may selos po na sa akin na um, pag papasok sa bahay is may makikita po ako parang bakit sila may award? Bakit ako wala? Ganito lang. <laughs> parang, tapos pag kay kuya parang nainggit ako na katapos ng game ni kuya ko is pag-uwi siya, may binibigay siya kay mama na pera, tapos may mga bago siya uniform para din po makatulong sa family ko. And then, pinasok po ako ni kuya ko sa boxing. 2010 po, nag, uh, nag-try out po ako sa uh, kay Mayor Romualdez po, yung summer ano po, camp. Um, doon po ako natuto. Uh, tinuruan po ako ni kuya doon. And then, after nun po, naglaro-laro na po ako ng mga mga mayor's cup, no, mga palaro pa sa amin, parang local lang. Tapos, um, hindi po alam ni mama ko yon tapos pinagalitan niya po ako. Sabi po ni mama ko, kay kuya ko, kung bakit, uh, bakit daw hindi sinabi sa kanya, napakababae kong tao, bakit niya ako pinasok dito. Tapos, um, medyo nagkatampuhan si kuya ko, tapos si mama ko, kasi nga nilihim niya, tapos pinagalitan daw ako ni mama, gano'n. 
pinagalitan ako na huwag ako mag-boxing kasi nag-aaral ako, ganyan, napapabayaan ko. Tapos mga 2011, medyo nahinto na naman ako ng boxing kasi nga po, um, ayaw ni mama. And then, ayaw ko din naman mag-aral kasi gusto ko mag-training na muna. Parang nag-aaral, nag-aaral na naman ako ng high school sa Leyte National High School. Tapos night class ako noon kasi noong morning, gusto ko talaga mag-training ng boxing. So, simula sa amin hanggang doon sa ano sa school parang lalakarin ko parang tapos mag magte-training ako so yung ginawa ko is sa morning is nagte-training ako sa gabi naman is nag-aaral ako night class and then afternoon hindi naman ako nakagraduate kasi nga parang gusto ko magboxing tapos ayun parang na-realize siguro ni mama ko na na gusto ko talaga to tapos ayun pa niya pa rin ako payagan at tapos uh, parang at the end Parang wala na siya magawa kasi parang gusto ko muna mag-boxing kasi parang sabi ko, um, nakakatulong naman sila kuya ko kahit nag-ano po na babaksing. Pero nag-aaral din po si kuya ko. Tapos, um, 2000, 2012 naman po, um, naglipat na po si kuya ko sa province of Leyte. Doon na po siya nagturo. Um, naging coach po si kuya ko, si Kuya Romnek Villegas. And then, Pinasok niya po ako sa Leyte Sports Academy. Doon po nagtuloy-tuloy yung training ko. Nagtitraining po ako doon pero nag-stop po ako ng pag-aaral. Tapos, um, 2012 din po, naglaro po ako ng um, National Open uh, sa Bohol. Tapos, doon po nag-gold po ako. Tapos, nakuha po ako ng National Team. Tapos, nung nalaman po ni Mama ko na nakuha po ako ng National Team. Tapos, Pupunta po ako ng Manila. Ayaw niya po ako ng payagan noon. Tapos, yun, umiiyak si Mama. Day. Umiiyak din ako. <laughs> Kasi parang, ayun, opportunity. Tapos, nung time na po, parang two days before ako, ano, um, umalis sa amin. Tapos, uh, si Papa ko kasi parang supportive lang. Tapos, si Mama ko yung ayaw. Tapos, two days before ako umalis. Si mama ko, um, ayun, pumayag na siya. Siya yung bumili na lahat ng gamit ko, ng mga kailangan ko. And then, hinatid niya rin ako sa airport. Ayun po. Um, sa ngayon po, um, gusto ko lang sabihin kay mama ko, um, Hello ma, gusto ko lang uh, magpasalamat sa lahat na binigay mo sa akin, tsaka pag-aalaga, tsaka sa mga sacrifices. Um, ma, um, I'm, I'm so thankful to God for giving me such a great mother. I am so lucky to have uh, to have you um, to be your daughter, and um, I feel so blessed to have you as my mother. Take care always. I love you so much, and see you soon. here with us another champ from the land of Negras Occidental. She is Riza Pasui. Riza started her boxing career in 2013 and has been fighting in the boxing ring. Aside from winning a silver medal in the women's lightweight of the 2019 SEA Games, she also qualified for the quarterfinals in the coming Olympics. I'm Riza Pasui and I'm here to Mrs. Padilla Negros Occidental at ang pangalan po ng aking magulang ng aking ina po ay si Quintina Digas Pipasuit at nakatira din po ngayon sa Mrs. Padilla Negros Occidental. Uh, yung ginagawa niya ngayon ay patuloy po na gumagabay sa mga kapatid ko na naiwan doon na kasama niya. And then sa mga apo niya, she's a good teacher and good advisor. Um, napaka dami naming banding na kasama ko siya um, kung anong trip ko trip niya so at napaka malapit ko sa sa kanya and nagpapasalamat din ako sa kanya na siya yung nagiging inay ko at masabi ko napakaswerte ko na binigyan ako ng magulang na ganun at sa pagpalaki niya siguro wala akong masabi kasi napakabuti niyang ina sa aming lahat, hindi lang sa akin. At 
marami po kami magkakapatid so kahit isa wala namang napapabayaan or wala namang nagugutom about sa disiplina grabe siya magdisiplina naman sa amin so hanggang ngayon uh, binabaon ko pa rin yung mga salitang nakatatak sa puso isipan ko na sa lahat-lahat po ng nangyari nakasama ko po yung nanay ko uh, sa oras po ng problema po, uh, palagi ko pong kasama yung nanay ko. Siya po yung nagdadamay sa akin sa lahat-lahat kahit na minsan may iringan kami ng mga kapatid ko. Uh, siya po yung andyan lagi sa akin. At sa ngayon na andito po ako sa sports, na kahit masakit man sa kanya na nakikita niya akong nahihirapan o nasasaktan, uh, dahil sa gusto ko, pinagbibigyan niya ako to the support po siya sa lahat-lahat ng Uh, mga pangarap ko para lang po sa ikakabuti ng pamilya namin. Uh, kahit sa sobrang hirap ng buhay, lumalaban po kami na magkasama. Uh, sa, about sa pag-aaral naman po, uh, si nanay kahit minsan pinatamad ako, dumating sa point na ayaw kong pumasok kasi parang pipiliin ko na lang magtrabaho dahil makatulong, matulungan siya. Kasi nakikita kong nahihirapan siya, nasasaktan ako. Mahal na mahal ko po yung magulang ko at uh, sa school, pilit ko pong pinipilit talaga na gawin yung gusto niya para makita lang po siyang masaya. Saka napaka-supportive niya po na parents para sa akin kasi lahat-lahat po binibigay niya sa akin. Naghihirap siya para sa, sa akin. Sa, sa, sa 11 po kaming magkakapatid, parang ako po yung nagiging breadwinner namin. Sa akin po nakasandal yung pamilya ko. Tapos ah uh, Si nanay laging andyan, nakagabay sa akin sa mga pangarap ko. Hindi lang para sa sarili ko, kundi para sa mga kapatid at sa kanila. Nung narealize ko po, nagkaroon po ako ng interest nung sa boxing, uh, nung college na po ako. Kasi uh, taekwondo po talaga yung sports ko nung college ako. So, nagkaroon po talaga ako ng ano, once na mapanood ko po yung laban ni Manny Pacquiao. Parang, parang gusto ko po napasukin yung ganong sports. So, Isang time no na nagkaroon ng palaro sa amin, sa probinsya namin, uh, may nilapitan po akong coach na kung pwede ako makasali doon. Tapos mag, sa awa na po ng Panginoon, uh, nakapaglaro naman po ako noong 2012 dito sa Manila ng National Open. Doon po ako start na nakuha po ng national team. And then hanggang sa ngayon, andito pa rin po ako sa national team. Yung family ko is, si nanay is to do support pa rin sa mga pangarap ko hanggang ngayon sa, para sa aming lahat po. Sa ngayon po, walong taon na po ako dito na nanatili sa national team. So hindi po madali sa akin kasi ang dami-dami pong struggle na nangyari sa karir ko. Nagka-injury po ako. Dumating po ako sa point na gusto ko nang sumuko at hindi po biro na yung pinagdaanan ko. Tapos 2019 po, natanggal po ako sa team. And then, dahil po sa injury ko, kinakausap ko lagi yung mama ko. Ginaguide niya ako at saka yung mga positibong positibong bagay lagi niyang binabato sa akin na kung yan gusto ko, kung ito yung nangyayari sa akin ngayon, hindi, hindi ito ibibigay ni God sa akin hanggat kung sa tingin niya ay hindi ko kaya. Yan po yung nakatatak lagi sa akin na yung the best talaga yung parents, guidance ng parents para sa amin. Ang haba po ng time na ginugol ko dito sa national team, uh, dumating po yung time na sukong-suko na ako. Pero iniisip ko yung family ko, hindi ako pwedeng sumuko kasi yung family ko lumaki ako na andyan sila nakagabay sa akin. So hanggat buhay yung mga magulang ko, lalaban at lalaban ako para sa kanila po. Nay, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa lahat-lahat ng support ang binigay niyo sa akin. Uh, hindi man ako perfect na, na anak niyo, uh, pero uh, ginagawa ko po yung lahat para matulungan kayo, mapasaya kayo. Um, uh, salamat kahit hindi po, hindi ko po uh, napapakita kung gaano kita kamahal kasi alam mo naman, nahihiya ako na sabihin sa'yo na sobrang mahal kita. Uh, salamat sa tanan, salamat sa, sa lagi kang andyan at
patawarin niyo ako sa lahat-lahat ng mga mistakes na nagawa ko sa iyo uh, sa mga kapatid ko. Siguro uh, uh, hindi ko man magawa ngayon yung yung dapat kong gawin kasi malayo ako sa iyo. Uh, sana po bigyan pa tayo ng um, habang buhay ni God na magkasama para po yung uh, pagkukulang ko sa inyo is uh, gusto kong ibalik po lahat-lahat ng sakripisyon niyo sa akin uh, sa mga paggabay niyo sa akin uh, sorry sa lahat-lahat ng mga kasalanan uh, sa mga pagsuway ko sa mga gusto niyo kung nagiging matigas man yung ulo ko o may, nagiging matigas yung puso ko para sa mga kapatid ko Uh, patawarin niyo ako sana, maintindihan niyo ako. Alam ko din na nasasaktan ako na, nasasaktan lang ako na nakita ka at na malaman kang nahihirapan ka, uh, naghahanap ka ng trabaho para lang sa mga kapatid ko. Nasasaktan ako kasi dapat yung time ngayon is ako naman, ako naman yung magbibigay sa iyo at ikaw naman yung magpapahinga kasi gusto ko mag-enjoy ka na lang ngayon sa buhay mo. Uh, yun po yung mabigat na dinadala ko hanggang ngayon na kung paano ka po maalis sa ganyang sitwasyon. So, patawarin niyo pa ako sa lahat-lahat at salamat sa lahat-lahat ng pagmamahal niyo sa akin at sa mga kapatid ko. So, napatuloy niyo po kaming gabayan at uh, samahan sa mga laban dito sa mundo. Salamat po sa lahat. Another most awaited champ with us now is Josie Gabuco. Josie joined the Philippine national team in 2004 after winning a gold medal in the National Open. Since then, she has been representing the country in numerous boxing competitions around the world. Josie's notable achievements include winning the first gold medal for the Philippines in the ABA Women's World Boxing Championships in 2012 and holding the record for five gold medals in the history of the SEA Games. Ako si Josie Gabuco mula sa Perth Princess City, Palawan. Uh, ang mama ko po is si Loretta Anapi Gabuco and Tubong Palawan po siya. Ang mama ko po biglang ina, uh, masasabi ko na napaka uh, si Kaso para sa akin kasi sa siyam kami magkakapatid Ah, uh, lahat naman kami na palaki niya nang maayos. Sa akin si Mama kasi supportive talaga ng Mama ko pagdating sa career ko eh, sa sports. Ah, uh, nung elementary pa, li- pa lang kasi ako, sumasali na ako sa sports sa athletics. Naglalaro ako sa mga palarong pambansa. Talaga nandoon siya para suportahan ako. Laging laging niyang sinasabi sa akin, ah, uh, kung anong gusto ko, kung ano nakakapagpasaya sa akin, basta ibigay ko ng best ko. Uh, siguro sa lahat ng lesson na naibigay sa akin ng mama ko, noong time na talagang kasi nag-separate ng mama at papa ko ng bahay. So, nandun ako sa mama ko. Hirap kami sa buhay. Eh, wala siya may pakain. Tapos, umiiyak siya. Tinanong ko siya bakit siya umiiyak. Uh, nagsasorry siya sa akin kasi wala siya may pakain sa akin. So, parang nasabi ko sa sarili ko, magsusumikap ako, gagawin ko lahat, lahat na makakaya ko para maibigay ko kung ano ng mga pangangailangan ng, ng mama ko. Ganun yung iniisip ko, iaahong ko ang mama ko sa kahirapan. Noong time kasi na pumasok ako sa boxing, actually may laro po kami ng, sa athletics noon. Parang uh, tumatakas lang ako doon sa training ng fun, ng athletics. Tapos pupunta ako doon sa boxing. Kasi isa sa mga tito ko na nagsabi sa akin, sumali sa National Open ng women's boxing. May libreng pag-aaral, li- uh, libreng tirahan, may alawan. Yun ang naging way ko para makapag-aral ako. So, hinrap ko ng opportunity. Tapos, sabi niya sa akin, kung saan ang gusto mo, isusupport na lang kita. Sabi niya ganyan. Nung time ko na naglaro po kaagad ako ng National Open, parang syempre wala pa akong masyadong experience, wala pa akong exposure. Pagkatapos ko, tapos nakita ko siya na umiiyak pa rin hanggang nung matapos na nung laro ko. Sabi ko, bakit umiiyak ka? Siya, wala kasi nasasaktan ako pag nasasaktan ka. So to, 
ako, tawang-tawa ako sa mama ko sa reaksyon niya na ganun. Kung ngayon mo iisipin, ganun nung binigay niya support sa iyo na kahit na alam niyang nasasaktan siya, igogo niya kasi doon ka masaya. Tapos hanggang sa nakuha po ako ng national team, tapos yun ang first time na magkakahiwalay kami ng mama ko. Kasi sanay nga kami, lagi kami magkasama. Kahit saan kami magpunta ngayon, nandun na po ako sa Baguio. Mga ilang buwan pa lang ako doon, hindi na rin nakatiis ng mama ko. Ang ginawa niya, binenta niya nung pwesto niya doon sa Palawan sa market. Tapos sumunod siya dito sa akin sa Baguio. <laughs> hindi niya talaga kaya na mahiwalay sa akin. Pagdating na doon sa Baguio, nag-training ako. Kaya gusto ko makarating doon sa national team. Gusto ko makapag-aral. Kaya lang, syempre, hindi naman bastante nung pera namin na talagang kahit na hindi magtrabaho, parang bastante may, pag, may pagkukunan kami ng pang-araw-araw niya, pang-upa sa, sa boarding house, pang-kain. So hanggang sa naubos nung, nung pera na pinagbentahan niya, nag-decide na kami na, o oh, sige, mauwi ka na lang muna kasi hindi pa natin kaya. So umuwi siya ng palawat. At nagkaroon po ako ng unang pag-ibig, medyo nalihis po ako ng lendas. Tumawag ako sa mama ko noon, Uh, sabi ko sa kanya, uh, may boyfriend na ako. Tapos umiyak, umiyak siya. Tapos, bakit, bakit nag-boyfriend ka? Di ba sabi ko, huwag ka mag-boyfriend. Sabi niya, ganun. Tapos sabi ko, wait lang ma, may, may isa pa akong sasabihin sa'yo. Sabi niya, ano yan? Sabi niya, ganun. So, sa, sa, sabi ko sa kanya, buntis ako. <laughs> buntis ako ma. Tapos yun, humagulgol siya ng iyak. Then, ang pan ko sa, nung time na yun, kasi syempre, bata pa, parang, feeling mo, kaya mo na, akala mo, yun na yun, pata ka pa eh, masyado ka pang mapusok, wala ka pa masyadong iniisip eh, parang puro love lang. Tinanong niya lang ako, anong decision niyo, kung ano na mangyayari sa'yo, kung ano na mga plano mo. Tapos, nandun pa rin siya kahit na nag-fail ako sa career ko nung time na yun, talagang nafe-feel ko pa rin ng support niya sa akin, hindi siya nung sabing itatakwil or susumbatan, hindi. Umiyak lang siya ng umiyak, tapos, yun nga, nagtanong siya. Tapos sinabi niya sa akin na huwag mo na kaming isipin, huwag mo na akong isipin. Basta ang isipin mo nung sarili mo, nung kalagayan mo. Ganun lang nung mama ko eh. Eto na nung time na nabigyan ako ng second chance na makabalik sa national team. Eto na to. Sabi ko, pinigyan ako ng pangalawang pagkakataon. Hindi ko nasasayangan ng pagkakataon na ibinibigay sa akin ng abap sa akin. Mas sabi ko na mas naging porsigido ako mas tumaas ng goal ko, mas gusto ko pag nakapaglaro ako sa ganito, gusto ko makakuha ko ng medalya, gusto ko makapag-perform ako ng maayos. Siyempre, may anak ka na. So, parang ang iisipin mo kaagad na magiging future ng anak mo. Doon ko na-realize kung gano'ng kalaki nung, nung sakritisyo sa akin ng mama ko. Kasi lahat, lahat, lahat ng sinabi niya sa akin noon, lahat ng, ng pinababawal niya sa akin, na-realize mo pag naging ina ka na. Hanggang sa Nakapaglaro na po ako ng mga international competition. Sa kabutihang palad po, medyo naging maganda po ng performance ko nung makabalik ako ng national team. 2011, before mag SEA Games sa Indonesia, na-diagnose po ng mama ko na may cancer, ipaalis e, po ko noon, pa, papunta po kami ng UK sa Manchester. Tapos, sakto po na nung time na yun, na-diagnose ng mama ko. Sabi ko sa mama ko, ma, uwi ako, hindi na ako sasama sa training sa labas. Ay, sabi na mama ko, hindi, okay lang ako, okay lang ako, be, kaya ako naman. Kaya wala to. Ganyan pa ng mga sinasabi niya. Ako, umiyak na ako. Kasi, syempre, parang, <coughs> uh, gusto ko sanang umuwi, kaya lang talagang finish niya ako na, na sumama pa rin po doon sa UK. Then, nag-train po kami doon sa UK. After three days ko na nakauwi dito, tumawag na po sa akin yung mga kapatid ko na sinasabi na, de, uwi ka na. Sa ganun tawag ng mga kapatid, alam ko na na medyo hindi na maganda talaga nung lagay ng mama ko. Umuwi ako kaagad ng Palawan. Pagdating doon sa Palawan, malala na nung lagay ng nanay ko. Ilang linggo lang ako doon, mga two weeks. Ang ginagawa ko ng time na yun, magbabantay ako sa kanya, magdamag, tapos pagdating ng kinabukasan, umaga, hapon, magdi-training ako, 
Tapos pagdating ng gabi, magbabantay ako sa kanya. Tapos, inano ako ng mama ko, sabi niya sa akin, balik ka na, uwi ka na, kasi may, may laro ka pa. Ganun na nung sitwasyon niya, pero iniisip niya pa rin nung kwan ko, nung career ko nung time na yun. Sinasabihan ko siya, sabi ko, ma, nakakuha na ako ng bahay natin. Sabi ko, uuwi ka pa doon ha, magpapagaling ka. Tapos, nung una, sabi niya, oo. Sinasabi niya na sa akin na pagod na siya. So, nantay na sinasabi niya na pagod na siya. O sige nga, kung pagod ka na, kung hindi mo na kaya, ililit go na kita. Sabi ko, huwag kang mag-alala sa apo mo. Kasi nung apo niya, mahal na mahal niya yun. Itong bagsang apo niya yun eh. So, so sabi ko ako nang bahala sa apo niya. Sobrang kwan kasi ako eh. Sobrang close ako sa mama ko. Parang lahat ng pangarap ko, lagi nando nung mama ko. Ang dami ko kasi pangako sa kanya. Lahat-lahat ng pangako ko. Parang hindi ko pa natutupad. Nag-uumpisa pa lang ako. Parang bakit ganun? Parang ang bilis. Inisip ko na lang na tanggapin na lang. Pero masakit. Eh, nag-iinsayo ko, nagiging routine ko nung time na yun. Uh, pagdating ng umaga, mag-iinsayo, kakain, iiyak. Parang ganun na lang naging routine ko nun hanggang sa magsiging sa, sa, sa Indonesia. Pagkatapos, ayun, sa awa naman po ng Diyos, nanalo naman po ako sa SEA Games. Gusto ko, Juan, para sa mama ko, kaya nagsisikap ako ng ganun. Kung hindi ko man naibigay sa kanya lahat-lahat ng mga pinangako ko, sa kanya, isa lang nung kaya kong ipangako sa kanya. Yan yung magbigyan ng maganda kinabukasan yung anak ko. Uh, message ko sa'yo, ma. Sana naririnig mo. Ipapromise ko sa'yo na lahat-lahat ng mga pangarap mo para sa akin gagawin ko para kay MJ. Lahat-lahat ng mga pinangako ko sa'yo, natutupad na. Hindi mo lang inabot. Uh, pero sobrang thank kulang ako sa lahat ng pagtitiis sa ugali ko sa kakulitan ko. Ang kulang na-realize, ang hirap alam mo, palaki ng makulit na bata. <laughs> Tapos, mahal na mahal kita, ma. Yung future ni MJ. Ika mag-alala doon. Ako nang bahala. To all parents out there, we, your children, know so well how hard it is to raise us, especially our generation. We are forever grateful for every big and little efforts you have been doing for us, your children. But there's always room for improvements. Moms also need tips to keep them going every day. This is the reason we have invited for Women on Wellness segment, Miss Risa Nang, to give us a shot on mindful parenting. Miss Risa is a licensed psychologist with a private practice in the Ateneo Bulatao Center for Psychological Services. She is also a part of Time Faculty of the Department of Psychology in the Ateneo de Manila University and the University of the Philippines. She works with children, adolescents, and families providing therapy and parenting seminars. She conducts workshops for basic play therapy and advocates for the rights of the Filipino child. I'd like to talk to you about what is mindfulness and how can we apply it into mindful parenting. Why is it important? And if ever you do want to adopt mindfulness and mindful parenting, how do we begin to practice it? So I'd like to lay down two basic principles about child development. In the National Scientific Council on the Developing Child, they said that young children experience their world and the environment in relationships, and these relationships affect virtually all aspects of their development. And in healthy development, this will depend on the quality and the reliability of the young child's relationships with the important people in his or her life, both within and outside the family. And in our Filipino setting, Leon Alampay, a colleague of mine in the department where I teach in that university, she asserts that the parent variable remains a strong influence in a Filipino adolescent's development. So before we begin talking about mindfulness, let's reflect and rethink about the word mindful, mindfully. First, I'd like us to take this moment to take a short pause and reflect on these questions. As a parent, 
what impact do I have on my child? What am I teaching my child with my language and my behavior? From the first moment that your child wakes up and you begin to interact with your child, the quality of your interactions and how you engage with your child. What are you conveying to your child? What does it reflect about your belief system about your child? Do you begin to see your child as uh, a, a little person? Do I see my child as an extension of myself? Do I see my child with all her potentials and her uniqueness? Or do I see my child as my little helper? So all these belief systems that you have of my child do impact the way that you relate with your child. A second question that I'd like to invite you to think about is why do I have to practice mindfulness? And why is it important? In fact, some of you may even have thought, can't I parent my child the way I was parented? I think I came up and I think I grew up to be a normal person. So can I not just practice this? And so at this point, I'd like to invite you, if I could also impart to you this morning another alternative way on how you can interact with your child, are you willing to give this a try? And the third one is, how can I practice it? Maybe if my child is already too old, can I still be a better parent? So let's now talk about how, how is it that we've noticed how we, how we pay attention to the many things around us? So some key observations with the way that we notice, the way we observe, the way we interact with things and people around us. So a good question is, how and what do you attend to? Have you noticed that your attention and even the way that your mind wanders it does have implications on how you respond to stress. How do you regulate your emotions? And to what capacity do you extend empathy? Just recently, I was reacting to a very stressful um, moment and I noticed that I was very reactive. I easily um, became upset. So that was a moment when I noticed that I was not mindful. Our mind thinks as naturally and as automatically as our heart beats. It wanders on its own. Have you noticed when you would say our mind seems to have, have a mind of its own? And in many chances or many times, we find ourselves mindless. We find ourselves being very reactive and very impulsive. Many times we find ourselves forgetting, where did I leave my glasses? Saan ko ba iniwan yung susi ko ulit? Or um, you sometimes give a knee-jerk reaction and you say like, ay, hindi ko sinasadya sabihin yon or hindi ko sinasadya gawin yon. So these are some examples of when we become mindless. And many times we fall into um, a lot of uh, mishaps. We fall into accidents. We fall into situations where naiipit tayo, di ba? So those are examples when we become mindless. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is developing a higher and a deeper level of awareness in noticing at the present moment how your body, your thoughts, and your feelings are responding so that you can extend kindness to yourself and to the other. So let's sit down. Let's sit in for that moment and absorb what is mindfulness. No? So it is, it is a practice where you, all of us, can begin to develop a certain kind of awareness that it is deeper and maybe higher. And it is at this moment, not something of the past that you would be regretful or guilty of, and not something about the future that you would be anxious about. But it is at the present moment, it is now, right now, at this moment where you are. And it is looking at your body, your thoughts, and your feelings, and how you can not just react, but respond. 
we notice more about our thoughts, our feelings, and reactions because these are things that we can control, not of other people and circumstances and situations, but of your own thoughts and feelings. And it is being mindful of being, giving the best reaction and response so that you can be kind and compassionate towards yourself and others. I'd like to show you this example. There's a picture here of a person walking his dog. And this person, as he is walking in the park, his mind is full of the many things that he has to attend to. The chores, the responsibilities, so many sensory stimulation around him. But the dog, at the present moment, is just looking at what are the things that's around him. So between the two, between the person and the dog, who do you think is mindful? And who, in, who has his mind full? So this is an example of how we can be more mindful and not be full of so many other thoughts. There has been so many studies about the benefits of mindfulness for parents and children. And these are just some of the studies and the research that has cited the benefits of mindfulness. It has been associated with more positive emotions. It makes people less anxious and more or, or less prone to being depressed. It gives them more satisfaction in their relationships and so brings them less stress in these relationships. And brain activity has been associated with greater emotion regulation. I myself can attest to being more mindful in my relationships with my husband and my own children. So I'm able to practice this. So let's bring this mindfulness into parenting. So what is mindful parenting? It is intentionally attending to the needs of our children at the moment with compassion and being non-judgmental. It is looking at our children mindfully, attending to their needs, attending to um, their unspoken language, their behavior, and giving them the, the best benefit the most benefit for both of you as a parent and for your children. So let me explain to you what happens when you don't practice mindfulness. So I think um, I'll give you this classic example that when a stimulus is presented, such as um, a wild animal ready to attack you, so this will trigger your amygdala. The amygdala is that um, portion or that part of your brain found in the limbic system or in the middle part of your brain, the amygdala is responsible for your unconscious automatic reaction when a stimulus such as a wild animal is presented. So your automatic reaction is to create a fight, flight, or a freeze response. So a lot of us, we either run away, so that is what we call flight, or we have a freeze response, like the, the person on the left, that's a freeze response. Others will have a um, freeze fight or a flight response. Now, this is what we call the system one thinking, according to Kahneman in his research. System one thinking is when your mind works automatically, emotionally reacting, to a perceived problematic context. And in many circumstances, we can relate to this. When we perceive threat, when we perceive emergency, our midbrain is activated and we give an automatic reaction. So when you see that um, your child trips and falls down, your automatic reaction is to shout, to to maybe scream and run to your child to save your child. Um, another reaction is if you see fire, so your automatic reaction is to run back to the house and save your children. That is your system one thinking. So what is the science behind the mindfulness? So developmentally, Young children from the age of five to six, all the way to probably 
uh, maybe 16, 17, or 18 years old, the young children are still trying to develop their sense of initiative, their industry, especially for adolescents, their sense of identity. This is really a period of exploration and autonomy. And the, the neuroscience behind it is that their brains are also developing. At this point, only their brainstem and their limbic region have developed. The purpose of the brainstem and the limbic region, these are needed for their survival and adaptation. And this is where the system one is locked in because this is where you see children being very reactive. They have strong emotions. You see your children when they want something, they want to, they're demanding for something, their automatic reaction is to, to cry, to shout, to stomp their feet. Um, sisigaw sila, naiiyak sila, no? So this is associated with their system one reaction. And this is what we call the hijacking of the amygdala. A lot of times when we find ourselves in stressful response, our amygdala is hijacked. We get frozen in that system one thinking because we are only caught at the moment of stress. So we're not capable of thinking beyond the situation. So we react, we shout, we cry, we are stuck. Okay. So from here, when we begin to practice mindfulness, their cerebral cortex, or what we call the system two, begins to develop. So children, as they grow older, perhaps in middle school, beginning middle school, and the cerebral cortex reaches full maturation, guess what? What age? The, the cerebral cortex reaches full maturation upon reaching adulthood. Surprising, no? Because it is only when we reach adulthood that we are more capable of making sound decisions. We're now able to make more deliberate planning. We can regulate our emotions and our body. We can even practice more reflective. We can um, be more slow, analytical, and conscious in our decision-making, planning, and organization. It is only upon the development of our cerebral cortex, which is the system two, that we can develop insight. And even higher than that, empathy. So as parents, we have to temper our expectations and understand that for children, they have challenges in their emotions and behavior because this is still part of their developing brain. So mindfulness gives us a chance to pause. So going back to our earlier example, how can mindfulness teach us to be more reflective, to practice system two thinking? So again, using that same example, if a stimulus of a threat or an emergency happens, Previously, your amygdala will be activated, and so you give an unconscious automatic reaction. But what I'm inviting you to do is that you can slow down such that the amygdala can be disengaged, and you can slowly engage your prefrontal cortex and be more deliberate so that your system to thinking is slowly practiced. So that when you engage in your interactions, your conversations, you can give deliberate responses such as this. So how is mindfulness practice? Let me invite you to four steps. So let me call it the four Ps. So the first P is what we call, what I would call the pronto, the first P. So the pronto, in other words, in other words, pronto sounds like, you know, what is the immediate reaction? So in pronto, we have to be aware that we give off an automatic and an impulsive reaction. We can be locked in to our system one thinking. System one thinking traps us into misinterpretations. You know, we jump into assumptions and conclusions. And in fact, sometimes we're held in by our biases. You know, yung mga stereotypes natin, di ba? Those are part of our biases. We also have to notice 
we have automatic and learned responses. Learned responses are all our um, instinctive reactions that we have um, practiced in the past. At this point, you know, we tend to bring past memories and experiences in addressing present behaviors. And, you know, sometimes these are not helpful because what happened in the past may not be applicable in the future. So that's the first step, the first P. I call it the pronto. Just being aware that we can give off automatic responses. But our re reaction should not stop at pronto. We should go into our second P. Our second P is what we call pause. So when we pause, it's when we breathe. And we have to ground ourselves. There is some truth to what people say that when you're being upset, when you're being anxious, and you have to count to 10. Hindi po ba naririnig natin yun? Yung sasabihin nila na, kalmado lang, relax. So that's an invitation. Kahit split second, no? we can take that momentary pause to arrest us from being, um, from going through the system one thinking. Para bang siyang runaway train, di ba? We have to ring the bell and take that pause. Let's be slow to react and ask ourselves, why am I reacting this way? So when you take that pause, you are beginning to be mindful. And so from there, you can go to our third P. And this is what we call parsing. So yung parsing is like yung hinihimay-himay natin. So when you parse, it is like breaking down the situation. You try to understand what happened before. What have been the triggering events? What started this? Siguro gutom yung anak ko. Siguro ako rin yung gutom. Um... What are the possible consequences that can happen if I go this way, if I do it this way? What can happen if I do it that way? Or who are the people involved here? Who are the people that I can call? Um, what, what are the, the possible and the other variables that are contributing to the situation or to this um, emergency? You know, so it's breaking it down to... Um, what are the possibilities? And again, this is part of our system two thinking because we are now engaging our, um, our cerebral cortex so that we can slow down our automatic reaction. And our fourth P is when we can begin to pay attention. We observe and notice our verbal and nonverbal behavior. We, we can pick our words, we can choose our words deliberately and carefully so that, you know, hindi tayo nagmumura, hindi tayo nagsisisigaw. We watch our tone, we're very careful with how we convey our, our emotions. So we can be more rational, we can be more reflect, reflective and deliberate and slower. So an example here is when your child throws a tantrum and does not want to change clothes. So how can we practice mindfulness here? So in our system one thinking, we find ourselves emotionally reacting. So yung parang nag-umpisa na tayong magalit, yung lumalalim na yung hinga natin, and you might even begin to go into a rage mode, no? so emotional reaction. And this is where you can see that Oy, this is the pronto reaction. Nagagalit na ako. Naiinis na ako. Gusto ko nang subigaw. So that's the pronto reaction. Now, if you're not careful, your system one reaction is actually activating your child's system one as well. So she begins to think that she's a bad child. She feels misunderstood. You know, so um, your child is upset. You're upset. And then later on, when all things have calmed down, the parent regrets and feels guilty. And so you might notice that this is creating a cycle. So your pattern of reaction triggers your child. Your child's reaction triggers you. And then, so ito yung mga narinig natin na, 
ha- helicopter parenting o kaya you become an uh, a tiger parent or um you know alam mo yung dolphin parenting you're trying to always be cheerful just to make up for what you think you lack or what you're guilty of so this is not a helpful and it's not healthy in the parent child dynamics at this point you can take a pause you can make now that deliberate decision to change the pattern that you and your do- your child have caught yourself in this cycle so when you pause you can begin to have a curious inquiry so that you can practice system two. Approach your child's behavior with interest and curiosity. Hindi yung parang you flagellate yourself and you punish yourself. Parang, oh, what have I done? What have I done? I've been such a bad parent. I can never be a good parent. But, you know, at this point, practicing compassion towards yourself, you can say, okay, what can I learn about maybe from today's session, and how can I change? So to practice compassion is to change the way you parent. So your attitude now can be more of a curious inquiry. It's looking beyond the action and the behavior of your children and seeing their needs. So these are some questions that you can ask yourself. I wonder why my child did that. Is there, is there something that she wants to say that she may be unable to say or unable to express? Is she asking for something behind that behavior? Am I aware of her needs? Or maybe some developmental needs that I have not checked? Maybe physically she is tall, he is tall. But then, you know, biologically, my child is just six years old. I'm forgetting that. Or maybe um, my child is really a morning person. Or maybe my child is, my child has a different temperament. She has a slow to warm up temperament that I'm forgetting. So these are some of the needs that you have to check about your child. And so from these needs, you can begin to evaluate what is the best response that I can give. The response that is proactive and sensitive to both my child and myself. So this is where you keep you can practice the parsing and paying attention. So I'd like to, to close with this um, encouragement that when we pay attention with interest and curiosity, this approach of curiosity to your inner experience characterizes the intention for mindful practice. So I would like to close and summarize this morning's um, short lecture on mindfulness and mindful parenting. It is when we can pay attention purposefully with non-judgment and acceptance towards our children. It is important to practice mindful parenting so that you can encourage better communication, better discipline, and motivate your children. And let's practice the four Ps, the pronto, to pause, to parse, and to pay attention. So I'd like to thank you at this point, and I will see you next week for our second part on Mindful Parenting. Time is up for this week's Rise Up Shape Up. Thank you everyone for your support. Rise Up Shape Up is brought to you by Philippine Sports Commission Women in Sports. We would like to thank our partner, Padcore, and our event sponsor, Mercari Sweat. We'd also like to acknowledge the Philippine Sports Commission Board of Commissioners. Chairman William I. Ramirez, Commissioners Arnold Augustin, Ramon Fernandez, Celia Kiram, and Charles Raymond Maxi. See you next week for another episode to celebrate the hardships of mothers in racing athletic champions. Meantime, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. Again, this is your host, Angel. Have a marvelous day, everyone. Rise up and save us. Rise up and save us.